Hey guys, Level Cap here. I hope you're enjoying the holidays and it's that time of year to make a prediction of what the best first person shooter is of 2018. We got 12 months ahead of us and many cool games to choose from. I'll be going over the top 10 shooters that I am most excited to play in 2018, starting from least excited to most excited. And remember, this is my personal list and I'll be going over the reasons along the way. Number 10 on the list is Hell Let Loose. This is a highly, highly realistic World War II first person shooter game in which the developers have built a one-to-one -one scale of various World War II battlefields. This is really cool for any history buffs out there or people who want uh, milsim type shooters. It seems like it could be sort of the World War II version of squad. I hope the pacing of it is a bit faster and that's mostly why it's number 10 on the list. It looks really cool. It looks highly authentic. The graphics look neat. I'm just a little concerned that the realistic pacing may not be my personal thing, but then again, it might be yours. Moving on to number nine, we have Escape from Tarkov. This dilapidated post-apocalyptic style first-person shooter borrows a lot from the Stalker franchise. And in fact, I think has at least a few of the Stalker developers on board with the project. I love the first-person shooter Stalker and a multiplayer scavenger version of that game sounds like a lot of fun. I do have my reservations as I have played the alpha a little bit. And although the realism and shooter mechanics of it and ambiance of the world is all really cool, the gameplay itself I found a little bit lacking, but maybe that'll get refined in 2018, considering that this game is still very early in development. Number eight on the list is Red Dead Redemption 2. Now this game would probably be in my top three, except that I'm primarily a PC gamer and Rockstar Games has not announced this title for PC yet. This is really unfortunate, but Rockstar makes such good open world exploration games that uh, I can't wait for Red Dead Redemption 2. Red Dead Redemption 1 was received with overwhelming praise from pretty much anybody who played the game and fans have been waiting patiently for a follow-up. Now that it's almost here, I think it's going to be an absolutely huge game. I can't wait to play it. I personally like the Wild West setting of it uh, so much. I think comparing it to Grand Theft Auto is a pretty fair comparison. I just prefer this setting over the GTA setting even a bit more. The writing, storytelling, and graphics look like they're going to be top-notch and on par with what we can expect from Rockstar Games. Game number seven on the list is Anthem. This made a pretty big wave at E3 2017. It's scheduled for a release in quarter four 2018, and it looks like it's going to be the Destiny competition coming from EA and BioWare. Now, BioWare's got a long history of making some pretty solid games, and the fact that they're putting their efforts behind a giant open-world exploration sci-fi shooter-style game is pretty exciting. The visuals themselves are just nothing short of stunning, one of the better-looking games I think showed off in 2017, and if the gameplay itself is really fun, then this could absolutely be a massive hit. We'll have to see how closely it mirrors the gameplay of Destiny, or if maybe they take their own route. A lot of people don't really like the spongy shooter mechanics of Destiny games, so maybe this will take a different approach entirely, but it does seem to be heavily based around looting and shooting. Game number six on the list is the System Shock reboot. Now, the original System Shock came out way back in 1994. I realize many people probably have never played it, but this was an incredibly innovative game that combined action adventure with a lot of cool new emergent styles of gameplay. In fact, one of my favorite single player games of 2017, Prey, heavily borrows on many of the things that made System Shock a great game and is probably more of a tribute game than anything. So if the System Shock reboot can capture that original magic and propel it into a 2018 gaming environment, then it could be an absolute excellent game. Set for release in quarter two, 2018. I'm very excited to get my hands on this one. Game number five on the list is something I'm quite excited for. This is one of those stories of a game mod getting so popular that the developers made a standalone release, which came out in 2014 called just Insurgency. And now Insurgency Sandstorm is bringing not only a single player aspect to the game, but updating the game from the uh, Source engine onto the Unreal 4 engine. 
and it looks pretty darn cool. The gameplay features highly realistic modern military combat, often in a Middle Eastern setting, but the controls and the pacing and everything about it is more updated for modern shooter fans, so it's faster paced, uh, simplistic controls, but it still embodies many of the things people might enjoy about highly realistic shooters. Now the single player aspect of this game, which will be the first single player addition to in the insurgency world, follows a female Kurdish freedom fighter. This is a pretty big departure from the standard shoot 'em up single player games, even the ones that take place in the Middle East, and this could be really interesting in a brand new take on the shooter single player experience. We'll have to wait and see if New World Interactive's gamble on dividing their efforts for both multiplayer and single player pay off, but nonetheless I'm very excited to play an updated version of Insurgency. Game number four on the list is Hunt Showdown. This is a game that could be seen as jumping on the Battle Royale bandwagon, except that I think it was in development long before PUBG ever came out, and it's taking a completely unique and original direction on the game mode. Taking place in the early 1900 swamplands of America, players will move around in teams of two using modded World War I style weapons to take out zombies, giant spiders, and other demonic style creatures, as well as other players. So adding the PvE element and bounty system to the game with certain high level monsters allows players to win the game in other fashions other than just eliminating all the other players, but PvP will still be a heavy element of the game. I'm really excited to see how this plays out. It's a completely different take on the battle royale genre and the setting and ambiance of the game looks absolutely stunning and horrifying at the same time. Game number three on the list is Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. And you might be thinking, ah, uh, level, this doesn't count. It's a 2017 game. It was an early access in 2017 and came out of early access in 2017. It's not a 2018 game and that's Correct, but it's also a game that's being developed as a service, which means we're going to see a huge amount of updates to PUBG in 2018. PUBG is not a finished game, it doesn't play perfectly, there's plenty of problems with the game design, and there's going to be so much Battle Royale competition in 2018 that I think PUBG is going to have to update its game design a little bit to stay competitive with them. The mid-game is incredibly slow, and I'm curious to see how the developers update and mod the game to be more entertaining to watch both from a tournament standpoint and be more entertaining to play from the average player standpoint. It's going to be a highly competitive year for games, and I think just assuming that PUBG PUBG will stay on top all of 2018 is naive and we're going to see a lot of changes coming to this game and the battle royale genre. Game number two on the list is unsurprisingly Battlefield 2018. Coming out in the holiday season as usual with Battlefield titles, this one is rumored to take place around the World War II theater of war. This is an unconfirmed rumor, but we'll have to wait and see. It could be very exciting. The current game of Battlefield 1 has really done all the legwork for balancing out a World War II style game mode as the gameplay is very, very similar. Again, provided if this rumor is true, I think it is a bit risky that DICE is doing two historical shooters in a row rather than bringing a modern shooter into the mix and just mixing up their release schedule with modern historical modern historical. A World War II Battlefield is something that I haven't really played since Battlefield 1942. We saw it a little bit with Battlefield 1943 but that was a console only release and a very limited slice of a uh, full Battlefield title. So this could be an absolutely epic and massive game. We'll have to see how the fan base reacts to whatever DICE announces probably coming up in E3. Now, some of you might be surprised that Battlefield 2018 is not my number one game on this list, but that's only because Star Citizen Squadron 42 is something that has excited me even more than the next Battlefield title. And that's simply because they did a recent vertical slice of the game that showed off their single player, or at least a single mission of their single player, part of a single mission of their single player, and that was exciting enough to really get me amped up for Squadron 42 and Star Citizen. This game has unbelievable depth to it. The possibilities of what you can do in the Star Citizen universe are basically endless and the single player looks absolutely excellent. We've already gotten a taste of the writing and acting and it looks like they've really fleshed out a fully believable universe and I cannot wait to jump into it. Fans of the game who have been following its development over the past five years will probably laugh 
laugh at the idea that I think this could come out in 2018, but who knows? Fingers crossed, maybe holiday 2018 is when we'll get our first taste of Squadron 42. I hope so, but if not, there's still plenty of development and updates that they're going to do to the Persistent Universe test client that players can play right now, which I am nonetheless still very excited about. Anyway, that kind of wraps up my top 10 list. There's a few honorable mentions there that I just didn't put in my list because I know I probably won't play them or at least play them very much. One of those is Far Cry 5. Huge amount of Far Cry fans out there. It's going to be a huge first-person shooter title. And then there's Metro Exodus. Nothing against the Metro games. I just never really got into them that much. So I probably won't play the latest one, even though it does look very impressive. Let me know in the comments what your top 10 first-person shooter games are for 2018 what you think about my list or if there's any other games that you think I missed out on that are actually going to be absolutely huge. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off. <laughs>